sisters. My father's actually writing a book about raising us, which he titled, We Should Have Quit After Two. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I had a really hard time figuring out what I wanted to do for a career, so I went to everybody's favorite backup plan and I became a cop. <laughs> That's not the backup plan. I mean, I sucked at it. I was horrible. I couldn't figure out my own life. How the hell am I going to help other people figure out theirs? It was so bad I'd go to a call, I'd help them figure out whatever it was, their domestic situation. Then I'd be like, all right, it's my turn. I got some questions. I need a little help with my domestic situation here. Got something going on at home. And I hate guns. I can't stand them. I'm terrified of them. My first call ever was a domestic violence call. I get there, this woman's like, officer, get in here quick. My husband's beating me up. He's got a gun. I'm like, did you say he had a gun? I'm not coming in there. I could get shot. I just met you. I'm not taking a bullet for you. Now you guys get in there and work your stuff out. We're gonna take off, give you some privacy. <laughs> Protect and serve my ass. <laughs> Another thing that was hard for me, and this is this is kind of weird, but it was really difficult for me to say this because I'm kind of immature. But maybe some of you, maybe Dan in the back, might experience this when you get arrested by a cop and they're searching you, what do they say to you? Spread your legs. That sounds gross. I don't want to say that to somebody. I don't say that to my own girlfriend. I don't even think a gynecologist says that to their patients. The stirrups are implied. Can you imagine corporate America saying that to somebody? Hey, John, love that report. I'll see you in the conference room. By the way, when you get in there, spread your legs. <laughs> no. Yeah, that doesn't, that's not the way it works. When you get hired in corporate America, boom, first thing, sexual harassment video within five minutes. Law enforcement, they bring you in a big gymnasium with a bunch of other cops. You're all searching each other. Spread your legs, spread your legs. I want to get freaky with you by Silk is playing in the background. <laughs> I don't recommend it. <laughs> Another thing I hated about being a cop was that was hard for me was the driving portion. Uh, let me explain, not driving per se, but before I ever stepped foot in a patrol car, I had 10 years of experience in a car. I developed some habits during this time. Some good, some bad. Okay, I have road rage, all right? I'm gonna admit it, I'll just tell you right up front, there's a lot of morons out there driving. Don't even get me started on the left lane hoggers, okay? Because I think they should be thrown in jail. I really do. Can you imagine the conversation in jail for somebody who got thrown in jail for that? What are you in for? Uh, burglary, robbery, murder, what'd you do? Oh no, I didn't get around to caddy in the left lane fast enough. They threw the book at me. But no, I'm just driving along, minding my own business. Somebody just cuts me off and you just it just pisses you off. You, gas it to catch up to him. You start screaming obscenities at him. You're giving him the finger. You realize you're in your patrol car. <laughs> not good, not good. As you were. By the way, let me just throw out this little tidbit for you guys. You're driving down the road and you're speeding, which we all do and you see a cop that's pulled somebody over and he's standing outside of his car talking to them, 
You don't need to fucking hit your brakes. His attention is already on somebody else. Come on, really. So speaking of scary situations, I uh, recently moved in with my girlfriend. And uh, it wasn't really recently, it was a year ago but it feels new because it's so hard to get used to because she's very Italian and I'm not even close to Italian. Like authentic Italian food to me is a good Domino's pizza. <laughs> We're quite different when it comes to that, but she's got some weird things in the house that she does. Like something I refer to affectionately as Italian Tupperware. Okay, that is an item that contained one product that now contains another, okay? For example, the Parmesan cheese. I went to throw it away one day. She's like, no, excuse me. We can use that for something else. So wanting to get out of the conversation as quickly as I could, I said, okay, that's fine. Next day, I have a beautiful plate of spaghetti. I go to the fridge, see the Parmesan cheese. There's nothing labeled, do not eat this. No big stop sign on it. Not even a sticker that has the number of the poison control center, okay? So when I bit into it and discovered it was laundry detergent, you don't recover from that quickly. She does that for everything too. I bought almonds recently, trying to be healthy, you know. And I opened up the bag and I ate some and I put them away. She comes up to me later, excuse me. By the way, this isn't really how she talks. But this is, as far as you know, this is how she talks. Excuse me, you left this bag open and that attracts bugs and they'll get stale. So I put them in a container for you. And she hands me my almonds that are now contained in an empty Clorox box. <laughs> so not wanting to get involved in any kind of conversation, I just started eating my almonds like it's normal. Okay? Next day I'm sitting there, I'm eating my almonds on the couch, her mom comes over, I'm sitting here with the almonds with the Clorox bottle like this. Her mom's like, Mark, no! She's not that bad, she'll get better, I promise, I'm sorry. I can imagine if we threw a Super Bowl party, she'd be like, 50 people, that's a lot of people, that's a lot of chips and salsa. I think we're gonna have to get out the old cat's litter box for that. <laughs> All right, you guys have been fun, thank you very much. <laughs>